Hello Humo friends and welcome to this new video. So today we have here Martin Fabian. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so we are going to ask, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions and uh, I think that the most important thing I want to ask him, which is the, the thing I think every people ask himself is, so why are you Martin Fabian considered, generally speaking, by a lot of people, which I know at least, the Fencer, the tournament fencers, which apply the Lichtenauer stuff in fen in tournament. I have no idea. You have no <laughs> idea, right? So, but you consider this thing real? You consider it correct, or you you strive to apply technique, or it just it happens? Mm. I think that this question has got multiple layers. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I mean, I'm trying to do something, I'm trying to be something, and I'm, I'm, you know, there is some level of, let's say, happiness and success that I might enjoy, or of course, also unsuccess, but there is also the way how people perceive you, and I cannot influence that much because, I mean, you know, it's people's opinions, there are many. I can understand. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the stuff I consider good and I think that it works in tournaments and also in fights because it's not just tournaments, it's sparring in general and also my approach to fencing in general. But I don't know, people must evaluate and judge how it looks like. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. But so probably I can let's say enter more deeply in this topic. So like generally speaking, people I will say many people are still connected a lot with the books, which is a good thing in a sense, right? We, like Hima is also about the books. So, uh, many people, um, generally speaking, mm -hmm. study uh, the techniques mm -hmm. and uh, when they are fighting, uh, I did it too a lot of times, uh, they think about the techniques, right? So, it's like having a catalog of stuff and then you pick the correct one mm -hmm. and you go for it. So is this the way in which you are fencing or is more like complex or...? No, really. I mean, I'm trying to have a very holistic approach. Mm. So, I mean, I'm not limited to a particular source. I mean, maybe more to a school of thought because, I mean, it's difficult to say that there's just one school because there are multiple schools, but they are connected somehow with some thoughts. So. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm trying to believe in the old books, in the way that, in the things that they teach, but I also think that there is like a level that we are already above that thing, because I mean, we have the unique uh, opportunity of studying all the sources at the same time, to have all the knowledge in the world. I mean, I also enjoy studying theory, I also enjoy to studying rapier sources or, and also some even later sources which are rather unconnected mm -hmm. because, I mean, fencing, you know, is a huge pile of stuff and we need to, <laughs> and in order to find the knowledge from something which has like sort of died, okay. he might dead. <laughs> so, in order to get the knowledge and to extract it, you really have to look into the broad picture. Okay, yeah. So, so you say, I mean, I understand what you say. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the question, it's like, you are not like, picking the technique, right? No. Because like, you do the stuff which is needed in that moment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you really ask like particularly, yeah. I mean, there is some approach which works and I'm always trying to react in the way which is best appropriate for the situation. So it's like never, well, sometimes it works like that with some people, let's say when the skill gap is like really huge, then you can say, okay, I will try, I don't know, to do this technique because it will most probably work with this person. But most of the time it's always adjusting to the situation which is available and the best means and sometimes you don't have the time to think as much about, you know, particularities, so you just do what is needed in that very moment. Okay, so is this quality something like that you can achieve through previous approaches? So let's say that, I mean, uh, for example, I passed through the time in which I was like picking the technique, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So do you think is a required step to get at your point, or is something that now we can avoid some in some way? Oh, 
I mean, every fencer passes through a certain phases in their development, all right? First phase is like starting to learn how to fence, okay? So you start to do footwork, you start to do some basic exercises, you learn how to cut, you know, you need to adjust to the sword, your muscles need to adjust. Then you start learning techniques, yeah, right? And and suddenly someone tells you that, oh, someone is cutting at you, you, sh you should do this and this, and you're like, oh, really? But there's not a lot of time. But then you learn it mm -hmm. progressively through the time, you learn more techniques, you're like... You, you get a big portfolio of things that you can do. And then comes the more interesting phase when you put it into trial by combat, right? <laughs> so, so, I mean, you start doing sparring, you know, you start, I mean, testing those things like in, in situation which brings chaos. Because, of course, when we just practice fencing, a lot of things are idealistic, okay? So, your instructor says like, he, you stand with the left foot forward, he stands... No, but this is not what happens in a fight. In yeah. a fight, people move in a ways you not always expect, they do guards in a way you don't always expect, etc. And suddenly, in order to be able to pull the same technique, it's a completely different story. Because, there are, because you need to learn to recognize what are the proper signals to do it. Okay? Because 10 people will cut the same cut in 10 different ways most of the time, all right? But in the end, it is the same cut, but you have to learn how to adjust it, right? So this is the most interesting part when everything what you have learned in the previous two phases goes to shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't matter. I know. Right? And then, uh, when you master this, when, when you are able, okay, to pull, I don't know, shilha, whatever, mezzano, whatever, whatever technique, then comes even the more interesting phase, mm -hmm. which is above all, and which is like tactics and strategy. Yeah. When you realize that in the end, it doesn't even matter what techniques you're using. It doesn't even matter your technical skill, whatever. I mean, you need it sort of to get there. It's not all the time. Sometimes you just go to the last one. And then you learn how to do the things in a progression that it always works for you. How to get your opponent somewhere. How to... what particular strategy to apply so the opponent does what you need or I mean you find opening where you need it and you know in that kind of thinking you don't need techniques which are like super complicated super yeah. difficult I mean then it's more or less about finding the appropriate opening and hitting and not getting hit yeah. so for me <laughs> when you ask about the techniques I mean I don't really care what kind of techniques I do because I mean the technical portfolio every fencer nowadays or at least every fencer who is a bit advanced, so it means even, I mean, uh, let's say most of the students that we have, they have a huge technical portfolio, Yeah. right? And I mean, there's a lot of things and not many things are really useful, but in the end, it's about a simple cut, simple thrust, simple parry, simple riposte, and some actions which help you to accomplish what you need to do. And if you know how to do this, then, in my mind, you're a good fencer. And I appreciate this much more than showing your technical portfolio because that's not really important in the end. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. So, I mean, in a say, like, following this discussion, can we say that, like, like basically fencing is... I mean, we have the gods, mm. etc., like books which are showing us the gods, etc., the plays, mm. whatever. So you just said that, like, um, people don't... Whole gods in the same way. It's not like a picture thing. Yes, exactly. It can happen. Is we can say that there are like fifty bomb tags, one hundred. Well, bomb there, there's one, but you know, you start learning fencing. You learn that there's one foam tag, right? Yeah. Then you start doing it practically. Then you're like, oh, but there's like fifty foam <laughs> tags, and then in the end you get back. There's just one foam wow. tag. Yeah. Because everything, what they, what people are doing, I mean, it's the same shit, you know, but you just have to realize it. Like, because, like, it's more important what you can do from that. Exactly. Okay. And what you're actually going to do from that. Yeah, yeah. So, we can, and so is that the point in which we arrive to tactics, right? Mm -hmm. So you can define movement from positions, like identify the problem mm -hmm. in a more like clear way and then deal with it the difference between tactics and technique i mean when we talk about tactics i think that we need to define that tactics is the way how you put things one after each other so it's like the order of things that you're doing right yeah. the strategy is like the 
big general order over everything, right? So, so for instance, good tactics is waiting, opening yourself, opponent makes a trust, you pair it and you uh, reply back with the riposte. That's like tactics, right? So the thing that you learn in tactics is that tactics completely break down the system you've been doing before because you realize that most of the stuff is useless <laughs> because sometimes, I mean, you can have a finger in your nose, you can look, you know, like weirdly, but you can still do the thing if you achieve, if it's good tactics. Yeah. If you made the opponent do exactly what you need. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> for instance, <laughs> I was fighting uh, in a rapier tournament once, and I was fighting against uh, a, a guy, right? And I noticed that the guy he wasn't exactly skilled in rapier. He was like a very good fighter. He knew how to use tempo and stuff, and he was mirroring everything I did. Because, <laughs> because I mean, it's also one of my guys. I mean, complicated story, but. Uh, uh, one of the first tactic that I teach to people, if you don't know what to do, do, do what your opponent is doing. <laughs> okay. Right? So, some people might, might find that if someone goes with their sword down into the Porta di Ferro, which is like Albert, right? Yeah. Uh, they're like, oh, what to do against it? Oh, there's no point. I cannot achieve, you know, bind and be safe. I say, okay, do the same. <laughs> okay. Right? Because you do the same and then the guy is like, Oh shit! <laughs> and then they return. You know, so sometimes I mean, just 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 do what the guy does, and you know, it's sometimes hard to deal with yourself. But it's a discussion for another time. So I noticed that the guy was repeating stuff what I was doing, right? So I, I did something, he did something, and I was like, damn. <laughs> so so then what I did, I started dancing like a completely stupid thing. Like I was like like la 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 with the hands, and he looked at me and he started la la la, la and in that moment I was like bam, <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so, so this is tactics. I mean, of course, I could have like gone with super complicated techniques he wasn't knowing, but you know, in the end, tactics is about using the best means appropriate uh, in that situation and the simplest means in order to achieve what you really need to do. So, let's say that, that's a, a weird question, mm -hmm. but um, let's say that there is a fencer, mm -hmm. right, which is like super good at uh, doing one thing, right. which is like fasting forward really fast, and uh, he can like, yeah, he can like move around mm -hmm. otherwise, and he's a good tactician, mm -hmm. so he knows why, when to go back, defend with measures, stuff like that, so he knows a lot of that, but he can attack only one way. Right. Do you think that being a good tactician and doing only one stuff, it's a weird question, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he can achieve things, is limited, I know. But yes, of course. Mm. I mean, it's an absolutely valid strategy. Mm. I mean, you know, of course, everyone wants to see in fencing the complicated stuff. Everyone wants to see, you know, like turning your sword around your head, throwing it from down and doing like the complicated, because this is like considered technical excellency. Which is cool, by the way. Yeah, of course, it's cool. Everybody of us wants to do this cool trick and everyone to see like, people, oh, you can do this. But that's not a real fight. In a real fight, <laughs> real fight. <laughs> I hate it. Okay, but let's use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. I know. <clears throat> in a fight, in sparring, whatever. In the end, what's important is to hit. Yeah. It doesn't matter how you hit. All right. It really doesn't matter. If someone is good in keeping distance and just sniping your hands, it's a valid tactic. I mean, for instance, if I was, for some reason, to go to a fight for life and death or whatever. And if I could hit someone five times in a row into their head and, and they would be so injured that they can't continue and then I will do some finisher, it's a valid tactic. I mean, you know, there, I mean, I have read multiple books which do have accounts of real duels and it's like, you know, the, the variety of the things that were happening is so big that I think that the question of what is real and what is not is absolutely nonsense because yeah. Everything that can happen will happen. Yeah. Okay, maybe it will happen just once, but it will happen, right? So, even in this case, if there is a fencer who can do just one attack and has a good footwork and he or she can apply it like in the good moment, I consider them a good fencer because I know it is not a small feat yeah. to be able against anything what is happening because I mean your opponents are always different some like more to cut some had better worse footwork are taller smaller smaller yes 
But if you are able to post one thing in every situation, actually you're a genius, right? I agree. I mean, I mean, I, 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 was, I was curious to like to hear your answer to this kind of thing because, like, sometimes I think about this like abstract situation, right? Right. And they can't be yeah. even. It can be real, right? You yes. Just say that. So yeah. It's also like uh, I'm really happy that you answered in that way because, like, in a sense, it's something which I think too. And uh, also, I, I really appreciate that you mentioned that, like, the apothetical, like, real fight stuff, because, yeah. like, people is really possessed by it, right? Yes. So, like, you think that, um, so how you think, like, because going through this topic, right? <coughs> so, people is really obsessed about, uh, mm. like, HEMA, the real stuff, the real fighting, blah, blah. You just mentioned it, you just mentioned what would be your approach, but... I mean, I consider that uh, that's my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. So, if someone is good at tactics and can win tournaments, and you, as you said, like, generally speaking, uh, people which are good at tactics and <laughs> win uh, tournaments, they also have a good technical repertoire. Mm -hmm. I think that like a tournament dancer in an hypothetical post-apocalyptic world in which uh, what, whatever they want, they have to smash each other with long sword, whatever. Uh, they will be really good. Maybe. Th this, Maybe is, yeah. th this is the case. I mean, the, the, the general thing is, whatever you do, what kind of art, it doesn't have to be like combat or whatever. I mean, you train in a way to get better. Yeah. Right. So for us, the closest way to experience a fight is a tournament, sparring, whatever. I mean, we can take sharp weapons. I mean, every one of us has tried stuff. Yeah. But... I'm really not convinced after my experience that it will teach me like something new. It has taught me like nothing. I, I mean, the more you handle, for instance, sharp weapons, the, 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 the less you, the less respect you have for them. Yeah. Right. It's like for me, like, oh, sharp weapon, you know, I don't care. I mean, I don't really care if it's sharp because I mean, I have been handling them so much that it doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I mean, I can understand if someone holds a sharp weapon against me that it is dangerous and like I said, people have tried all those stuff, but after some time you, you lose the respect, right? And the question is, why should we endanger ourselves to, to get injured in some way? Because I wouldn't learn anything new if my hand was cut. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> that might happen with anyone. I mean, a, a newbie might come and he, he or she is so unorthodox that they can hit you like just something and that they will cause you lifelong injury like why yeah. like, why? like like what's the point it won't teach me anything long and like, anything new and i think also that for people living in a hypothetical <laughs> post it doesn't matter because there are so many factors you know like for instance in slovakia there were like multiple you know people get into fights all the time yeah and from time to time you read like a master of karate got into a fight in a village and he was put unconscious or he was he, he died for some reason right because yeah. you know fights in this idealistic hypothetical reality people imagine that the sun is in the spot and you know all of you have the same conditions all of you both of you have the uh, shoes which are not slippery you know there is no heel everything you have the same sorts but this doesn't happen yeah i mean if you get into a life-threatening situation you know there is one uh fancy book fencing book by michael hunt okay. michael hunt i don't know if you've seen it no, 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 it's it's about it's a rapier and it's like a, half a joke because it was a like a fencing master was writing a book to a young student whatever he was like some noble guy right and in that book he tells him stuff like if you go out from a pub and someone wants to hit you throw the rapier and run away <laughs> or or take a stone and say then what's that behind you and throw the stone and then run away or like uh, or pick the first guy, cut his hand and run away or, you know, like really stupid shit. And this is it. If it's about your life, if you can't avoid a situation like that, you always avoid it. Yeah. Okay. And if you cannot avoid it, uh, you always pick the best means. So ideally, I mean, this will sound really strange, but if I have the sword, I would rather have the other guy not have a sword. <laughs> of course, of course. Right? <laughs> because, I mean, this is how you protect your life, this is how a fight should happen. And if you have swords, then 
God forbid, I mean, uh, God allow, you, you must use all the best knowledge you've gathered in the, the years. And I think that the guys who have been training both in sport and for combat will have more success. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one last thing that I will say in this regard is like, you know, Lichtenauer is a great source and there is more material than just the longsword because there's the armored stuff. Yeah. And there's the horses and in the armored stuff, you know, there comes a point and he says, okay, so let's talk about the real shit, right? <laughs> and and, and the, 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 the real stuff that he's talking about isn't like, now you should be like fighting more stronger. No, no, it's not, no, no, no. It's not exactly that. It's mm. uh, different things, you know, he says, if you want to really hurt some, someone, throw the, po like not the, throw the pommel, but <laughs> hit them with your pommel in the knee or break their arm. Okay. Like, so the division between stuff which is like dangerous is like this can really hurt you like and imagine imagine like nowadays broken arm is like uh, you know for three weeks it's uncomfortable but then you get well worst case scenario you get a surgery yeah and they fix it for you but yeah. in the middle ages schluss the end i mean you, right. you have to be like really lucky um, right or if someone trusts at you but because this is also something that what they are saying in the Blossfechten, if someone trusts at you, the end. I yeah. mean, internal injuries, most people, I mean, die anyways in a few days because the medicine doesn't know the answer, Absolutely. all right? So, so this is what our ancestors distinguished. I mean, we have the perfect uh, opportunity of doing all of these things in sparring, in tournaments. So, so let's enjoy it. Let, let, let's be happy that we don't have to die. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. fencing and, and let's explore it. I mean, and I still believe the person who does this in play will be readier for the real thing if there was a apocalypse. <laughs> I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully not. I hopefully think not. so. Hopefully not. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it was a really cool uh, answer. Like, thank you, Martin. And like a last question because you mentioned it books. Mm -hmm. Now I know that you are going out in like months or whatever with your book mm. do you want to talk about it yeah sure i mean i wrote two books but the first one is just like some translations with some of my notation and uh, uh i won't translate those but i have been working for some time on the translation of the second one it's difficult but now i have a person who is helping me okay so i hope to be able to publish it in a few months cool. I mean, just like a, just like my faith book, so it's more or less like the distilled Lichtenauer stuff, but more or less by my interpretation and my systematization. Because of course the old stuff is great, I love it, but there are ways how to make it better. Yeah, I mean that's cool. Uh, one of the thing which I I was thinking about when you mentioned it in these days, because we had chats about like this stuff, of course, in these days. Yeah. Um, Yes, that I was like, um, you shown the images, uh, you, you shown some images to me, etc. We talked about it. And I was thinking like, this thing is cool, like, because um, we arrived at a point in which like, you experienced it, like, you experienced the Hema from like early mm. days, right? You did a lot of things, you, I suppose you did errors to like uh, me uh, in some ways. Then you learn it from it, you change things, etc. You, mm. you develop it. And then you tested a lot of years your stuff on tournaments, etc. So you know really well uh, our environment right now, like the twenty-first century environment of historical fencing, which is, uh, which is history, right? So we are living in history. Sometimes people <laughs> forget about it, <laughs> yes. which is funny, right? So, uh, but that's important. I mean, you, and uh, I really appreciate this book because it's like, uh, like a tiny uh, brick more. It's like, like a it's, me it's memoir. Yeah, it's like, but it's like a new brick in historical fencing. Like, I like ah. keep it's like, uh, you know, when when people say it's like you, we want to bring the thing alive mm -hmm. again. So that's the way, right? I mean, I'm I'm happy about it because, especially of this thing. Of course, I will enjoy it because of like technical stuff, tactical stuff, whatever. So the what it is in the book, but in a philosophical way, I look at it in this way. So. It's really cool. One of the reasons I wrote it was because I think that after so many years I've been doing this stuff, I need to leave something. I mean, I mean, like people deserve it, you know, because there is some knowledge that I gained 
and the knowledge I gained, uh, besides people who have taught me in LMLF, I mean, when I be began with fencing 19 years ago, uh, the great deal of knowledge I got was from people who are long dead, 500 years ago. And I uh, have those people in high regard because they did something... I'm not sure if they could expect what would happen. Uh, I mean, just try to imagine a situation like now we're talking here in Italy and, you know, and maybe in 500 years they were like, oh, oh, but Malaguti meant this when he said this in his video, you know, like you, you never know what will happen. And maybe, you know, we don't know who Lichtenauer was. We don't really know who Fiore was. I mean, we have a lot of biographical info, but it's uh, not easy like to get the perfect image of a man. And But they gave us a lot to our life. They gave us some sort of meaning, some mystery, some I something. I mean, we have a great hobby and it's thanks to these guys who back then were <laughs> could read and write. <laughs> That's very important. All right. So they were able to pass knowledge and they decided this is good. And thanks to those guys and thanks to many other people. And of course, uh, uh, a lot of those uh, that was also practice and tournaments and failing and failing and having maybe yeah. some success and stuff I feel that like I should also catch my knowledge and the things that I think are right or correct or people should do and pass it on I mean yeah. whatever life whatever how people will see it it, it it doesn't matter but I feel obliged by the things that we're doing yeah and I think more people should do it because I mean it's a you know Fencing books, if you, if you look to Germany, for instance, yeah. it, it's more or less two decades or three decades when people were super productive, then something happened. I mean, maybe we don't, just don't have those books, but probably, you know, productive, something boring, again, productive, again, productive. So this is an imprint of an era. Mm -hmm. And in some time, looking back, we will see it differently, but I'm glad that we will have something. And of course, I'm not the only one who put up the book. There are many people who wrote the book, but I, I'm glad I could be or I can be also, you know, the image of the era. Yeah, well, I, I, think, uh, I think it's a cool statement. I, li I like it and uh, I like how you see this thing. So thank you, Martin, for this interview. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway. Thank you for the invitation and for having me. <laughs> You're welcome, Martin. Thank you. And so, yeah. Thanks for watching, people. And as always, see you next time.